Hey everybody, a new set brings a new thing, and today's new thing is a new Saint Guard. So it's time to talk about Saint Guard post GBT06. Stay tuned. the Team App Solution deck profile today. We are talking G post GBT06. We are talking Sanctuary Guard and its new evolution because, as we know, with each set comes new changes. So, what changes come in this one? Well, let's break it down. And like I said, I'll, this is a, probably will be a very similar build to things you've been seeing online. It did top at a, a variant of it did top overseas. It actually beat a friend of ours named David. Uh, David the Wan, <laughs> sorry. Um, and uh, I'm gonna break it down. Some of the changes I made. It's not not too many drastic changes. So let's get started. First things first. The start is Millis. Millis is good for obvious reasons. If you've seen the last profile of Sanctuary Guard you got here, pretty much any Sanctuary profile, you'll see that this is the right starter to use. It gets you great twos when you need great twos, and it ends games. So next, uh, I run twelve crits. Now really, the crit up to you is choice. Um, I run Lou's because I love the art on Lou, um, and I love the foiling on Lou. Uh, now, most people would tell you to run also the foil Atmoth crit because you might use it to draw a card and it is an option. I don't have those, and if I did, they'd be in my Atmoth deck, so yes, I am building one. You heard it here first, but it would be in that deck. Um, so instead, I'm using two of the Jewel Knight triggers that I really like. Two of the Jewel Knight crits that I really like. Uh, two of each, just because they're nice. And last but not least, the Crux. Uh, we'll get into this a little later, but we use four fl uh, Floral Paladin Flogels. This dog is devastating, and he brings you... He wins you games. And when he doesn't win you games, he still wins you games. Um, so, let's get started. Uh, that's the triggers. Oh, and of course, let's not forget... The most important triggers, heals. They're going to be even more f important in the future once we get um, G guards. So, next, grade ones, I run four stride fodder. Uh, we're running less than optimal grade threes, so stride fodder is an absolute must in this deck, so I run four of. And I run four normal PG. Now, a lot of the deck that top used unflip PGs. Um, you're more than welcome to do that. Uh, flipping is something that you're definitely going to want to do. Um, it's definitely going to be something you want to do because it, the deck is somewhat kind of blast heavy. That being said, I know that on the horizon we have the legend coming out. And since the Legend's coming out, there are going to be variants of it with the cross. Um, there are going to be versions of the cross that are going to swing at your rear guards, Legion with the end, and if you're not ready for it, then they're going to be restanding and they're going to be plussing, and you don't want them plussing when you're trying to aggro them to death. So this avoids that. I like this PG for that reason. I use the secret one, but you can really use the Jewel Knight one if you have that around, or Assault if you have that around, or the Trial Deck one if you have that around. Just one that protects rear guards as well is what I prefer. Um, but if you think that you desperately need the unflip, that's also an option for you. Now, for targets for Beanon, because we of course we'll get to Beanon in a second, I run four Richards and one uh, Mira. It's Now, you could run... Uh, and then to top it all off, we'll get into that in a second. I run two Blaster Friend uh, Barkle. And uh, Skill is basically he's a Dorant clone. If you have a Blaster Vanguard, and um, you call a Blaster Blade in the same column. So he's your Dorant clone. So, but really quick, you could run three of Blaster and four Richards, but uh, I need targets. I always seem to draw into these Richards. Or draw into these 6Ks, and you need targets for... Because you don't want to end up having to call PG with, uh, with Beanon. So, I use these for targets, and then I use these for the search targets for Sanctuary Guard. Or I use them for... Um, just to be drawing to them and get a good combo. Because that means you have 6 dudes clowning full ogle. And since you're running 12 crits, you can sacrifice calling some of those crits. Um, so, yeah. It's, uh, 5 targets. You want 5 targets for uh, Beanons. And they're all the Dindran clones, so they're going to help you draw some additional cards. 
Now, moving on to grade twos, uh, I run four of Blaster Blade. You need to run four Blaster Blade. This deck makes Blaster Blade so good. It's all about getting Blaster Blade out of the deck and just making devastating combos out of it. Um, I run four Beanon. Beanon is your Sword Me replacement. He is your Cattle Boss One. Make a make a column in the Grade Two Rush. Make a column in the Regale Rush. Make a column when you need a column, and he helps you draw cards off of Dindra, and he helps you dig out the Dindra clones. So I like him. And last but not least, the bread and butter of the deck, the engine starter himself, uh, favorite pupil of light and dark, Lou. Now, what Lou does is when he's boosted by a fl by the critical trigger, the Floral Paladin Flogel, or the Grade One uh, Blaster Friend Barkle, he gets plus three K when he's boosted. He also gets the skill to Counter Blast One. If you do, search your deck for a Grade Two with Blaster in its card name and call it to rear. Uh, shuffle your deck, and then that unit gets plus three K until the end of turn. Um, really good. And then because then you're gonna call this. He, this is going to go into... Oh, this also goes in the soul when you do that. Counter Blast 1 goes in the soul. You call this. It gets 3k from his skill. It gets 3k from the loose skill. So he can swing again. Then if you have the Flogel, the Flogel skill is Counter Blast 1. Uh, put it back on the deck. Stand a Blaster Blade. So that's another swing. It's basically, a, for all intents and purposes, it's a, a, ver it's a variant of Nine Twin Sword. But only for Blaster Blade. But it works. It works really well. Assuming you get the combos right. And then the last grade two of this deck is a one of uh, Knight of Twin Sword. Basically, if you haven't damaged this, haven't damage checked this, haven't drove checked this, haven't drawed this, this is a great target for um, if you have get stuck having to stride into Divine Knight. Uh, striding into Divine Knight or Aerial Divine Knight out mile then this is a great target to search out because he's going to give you an extra swing regardless. And you can search out the Lewin if you have the critical trigger. Boom, you're just coming off with combos now. And number one. Number two, it's searchable with Millis. So that's another way you can search it out and get some serious combos. Point is, he's searchable, and therefore uh, one of is okay. And he's, the deck doesn't get that destroyed if you lose him. Now, you've probably seen there's a lot of grade twos, a lot of grade ones in this deck. That's because there are very few grade threes. There are, in fact, only five. Now, if G-Reg ever hits, you're going to have to run four guarantees. I'm only running one because we have not hit G-Reg here in the United States. So, I'm running four Sanctuary Guard Dragon, one guarantee. I've seen some variants that run four Sanctuary Guard Dragon, one Outmile. That's perfectly fine if that's your cup of tea, but just know that if you stride into Outmile, I mean, if you ride into Outmile, then you're... You better your stride deck has to be a little different than mine. Mine banks on your grade three ride having to be a sanctuary guard, which, as you can see, it always will be. So that's why I run the four sanctuary guard and the one over Gale. I'm not gonna really go into those. I've gone into them at least a hundred times now from the deck profiles. Onto the stride deck, I run three regale. If you if you have to go into a fourth regale, you have done something wrong. You have just not made it. Um, I run two of Saint Blow because he's still a finisher. He's still good at doing that. I run two of uh, the Aerial Divine Knight Outmile. I love this card. This card is so much utility. This card should be in every Royal Paladin deck until the end of time. Surging so now grade two gives it 5k if you're a GB3. It's, it's, such a, it's such a good stride. It's such a good stride. I cannot... I cannot sing its praises enough. And we run up the one of Tex uh, Samuel. You'll rarely ever use this card. I've only used it maybe twice in my existence as a uh, as having it. I've only used it twice maybe. But it's actually won me the game both times I've used it. So I keep it for that reason. It's, it's, it's a tech. Because this is clearly your first stride. This is clearly your second stride. If you need more dudes, this can be your second or third stride. Your hopefully finisher your definite finisher, and your holy crap, what just happened? Why am I striding into this dude? Um, with 16 G-Zone, it's going to expand. Things are going to get different. Things are going to get weird. But more, more or less, that is the new engine. So the new engine is all about getting Lou, riding a grade 2, staying at grade 2, getting the Lou's, getting the Barkles, calling out Blaster Blades from the deck, swinging multiple times with his Blaster Blade, just pushing in little pokes at grade when your opponent's, if you go first, when he's at grade 1 and grade 2, and when you go second, um, just when he's at grade 2, and then just keep, just keep poking him, just keep poking him, and eventually he'll fall. It's a very aggressive deck. I enjoy it a lot. It's a lot of fun. Um, 
I hope you enjoyed this deck profile. If you did, make sure to like this video and check out our Gemmer video for because we're giving away one of these nice mats and it's the last week to enter in that contest. So we'll hear, see you here next time with Team Absolution.